Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. I'm here with Lance Maurer from Cinefilm and Steve Morris from Skywalker Sound. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Good morning. Morning. So um, you guys have been working together for a bit now. You've created, um, I guess it would be an, an audio tool set that automates parts of the process. So you guys are the experts. Dig in. What does that incorporate? What does it mean? How does it help? Sure. Um, there's essentially there's four components to the audio tool set that we created. Um, first and foremost is, is the uh, loudness analyzation and correction piece. Um, and that is able to comply to pretty much any particular loudness standard. So obviously it does 1770, um, one through four standards as it relates to A85 or 128 or different subsets for some of the different territories. Uh, additionally, we incorporated the uh, gated dialogue loudness um, specification that Netflix and Disney Plus currently require. Uh, and on top of that, um, as we work with some of our other modules in terms of remapping and also stitching, so, you know, doing editorial on the sound files, uh, we're able to do the loudness correction across edit, edit points so that we can measure loudness at different components. So if you split a movie up into eight, you can actually measure loudness across those eight pieces individually and then recombine them back together. And on top of that, if you were to take, you know, an input file, say 5.1, and perform a retime function on it, but want it to meet two different loudness standards, our module can do that as well. It can actually create in one job the output in two different loudness standards, such as, again, A85 and R128. Um, and so that's kind of the, the loudness module in itself. I mentioned the retime module. So the retime module can retime uh, multi-channel signals anywhere from, again, mono up to 7.1, phase coherent across stereo pairs, plus or minus 30%, um, with, you know, true pitch accuracy. Uh, and again, you can do that retime in different segments of any particular piece of content in one job. So you can just say, I'm going to retime, you know, this one scene, and it can do that, and then I'll put that file back in its continuous format with loudness correction on top of that. Um, next module is the mapping module. So we can take any combination of input files with any combination of input channels and tracks and I'll put those in any combination of files and tracks that, um, that the user requires. That includes summation, um, includes automatic downmixing from say 5.1 to stereo, and it can work across multiple input files and output files. So you're not really bound to any particular sort of file count or file channel um, count as well. Uh, and as I mentioned in the earlier parts with retime and loudness, we have the stitching module, which allows sort of complete editorial functionality across any particular um, automated job that runs through the, the tool set. So you can simply just cut out a section. You can add in silence, um, but you can also retime or even do loudness correction, as I mentioned earlier, on different segments. So in terms of what we're gonna release um, right now, those are the, the current slate of functions and functionality and feature set. Interesting, so the retiming piece, Lance, I'm assuming that's part of the technology that you developed uh, years ago, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit about that and also how you guys got together? Sure, so, um... The, as you know, we've been working on this cloud platform called Pixel Strings now for about four years. Um, the intent that is to create virtual brick and mortar in the cloud and bring more automated workflow to our users. Um, the initial focus was picture quality. And as we started to stage this up, we realized that we, we had a lot more work to do. And we, there were some areas in audio that we really needed to focus on. So I'll let Steve talk about how we, how we initially started talking and, and get directly to your question about retiming. So we released a version of our image processing solution set called Wormhole in 2014. And with the goal of being able to completely resample a piece of media to precise new runtime length. Uh, it's, it's a uh, niche market for certain, but, uh, but a very interesting one where people need to be able to change the runtime length of a piece or, or a clip or a full feature uh, by a, a certain slight percentage in order to meet a specific time uh, requirement that they have. 
And we've been doing that for about five or six years. And as we started to port that particular functionality into this cloud platform, uh, we realized that we there were some things in audio that we just needed to button up and we needed to address. And fortunately, we had started a discussion with Skywalker about possibly working together. Um, I think that the, the spirit of working together is that Cinefilm's main focus is picture quality, as you know. And um, now that we're building this platform to, to enable our, our end users to be able to access it easier, um, we, we were hoping to uh, up our game a bit on the audio side. So hopefully that answers your question about retiming in particular. Um, Steve, Steve could probably have some comments about uh, what motivated them to also work with us. Yes, absolutely. Um, so Skywalker Sound is, you know, has a history of doing post-production for feature film and some amount of episodic work. And we know that when we create those soundtracks, we create them in many different, you know, sound format versions and maybe to a certain degree loudness specifications, but once it leaves our door, we know that it goes through all kinds of different um, other processes to get it to what is ends up in the consumer's hands. And so for, from Skywalker Sound's perspective, we felt that this was an opportunity for us to help with our expertise, host what we do to help that distribution process and make that, that content that we produce reach the, the end consumer in the best possible way that it can. So you're sort of with the with these tools, you're sort of able to control the process until it is delivered. Yes. Okay, that's that's pretty fantastic. Um, how can people find the tool? Who, who so it's for audio, audio post people of all stripes? Would you say? Yes, certainly. I mean, um, and to clarify, the Skywalker Audio Toolset is a, is a technology that we're bringing to market um, from Cinefilm to our end users through the Pixel Strings platform. So, and Pixel Strings is designed to be a, a complete media reconversion uh, process that, that carries with it all the compute necessary to, to run these types of operations and all the licensing necessary to run all these operations. So for us, it was about simplifying uh, the message and the usability of such a large complex ecosystem. Uh, and, and that's been sort of the driver for the design for Pixel Strings. So, you're right. I mean, folks that, that work particularly in audio will be able to process audio clips through this through this system. But in the same regards, people that are also trying to do a standards conversion or a retiming or or any of these complex conversion processes, that's that's the spirit of of what this uh, what this tool set is for. So so yeah, folks that may not need um, to do picture. Uh, and only need to do sound will be able to process the sound files through the system as long as, as they're compatible. And in the same spirit, if someone only needs to do picture stuff, they would be able to do that too. But for us, it's about just providing access to the end users in a language that's easy to understand, both monetarily and functionally. I'm assuming also it comes with templates, um, already established templates for Amazon or Netflix, but you could also add whatever specs you're if you're delivering for National Geographic or whatever. Is that fairly easy to do within the program? Go ahead, Steve. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, it, it, both in terms of loudness correction or um, reformatting a particular piece of content to multiple different outputs and different loudness standards. Uh -huh. That's all something you can save as presets so that if you have different job functions you need to run over and over again, you can set those up one time only. Gotcha. Okay, so Lance, where can people find this? Where do they go? How easy is it for them to access? And um, if you want to talk about pricing? Sure. Um, so the Skywalker Audio Toolset is available in the Pixel Strings platform. It will be in enabled in about two months. So we figure early to mid June is the target right now. So, uh, and Pixel Strings is up 24 7, 365 currently in the cloud. And so it's basically there'll be an, uh, an update to it where the Skywalker Audio Toolset is available. And then over time, we'll add some educational components and some additional you know, things that can help guide people through those types of things. We'll put on webinars and, and uh, write a white paper here and there and able to, so that people, it's meant to be a self-serve, right? So this is, this is pretty, pretty complex technology. So one of the hardest things to do as technologists is it's one thing to create a tool set for people to have access to. It's another thing to make it easy to use. So, so the first 
order of business is to get it working, to flush it out, make sure that it's doing what we hope it's going to do. Then we enable it in the cloud. And when that happens, we'll send a bulletin out to all of our Pixel Strings cloud users. So they'll know the next day that it's live. And the other thing about Pixel Strings is that we have a mirrored configuration for on-prem. So the, with the idea being that if you design a workflow in the cloud and you move it to on-prem or vice versa, you should get the exact same picture of sound out, okay? And that's a really important um, differentiation of what we're trying to do because what it does is it helps satisfy the enterprise B2B market that we're familiar with and help our customers uh, have access to that. But with the cloud version, it does, it is, slightly different in that it's always on, right? So anybody can connect to it at any time. So talking a little bit about pricing, in general, the, the idea is that it's a subscription. I mean, this is this is the new way of doing things. We're, we're staging this up to be an OPEX system, which means you pay for it as you use it, and if you don't use it, you don't pay for it, okay? And that's, that's how the entire Pixel Strings ecosystem is built. It's the foundation on which we not only have uh, brought the Skywalker technology to, to bear, but other technologies from other great companies, they're all in on this concept, which is you pay as you go. So if it's an on-prem system, you'll pay a subscription. You'll need to contact us because we have to figure out how big your formula is and, and what kind of storage you have and how many files you're talking about, those types of things. And if you don't need wormhole, we're not going to you know give that to you. The cloud system, however, is everything that it does. It's always there. And when the, in the cloud system, you can pay a subscription to have additional features such as um, we're going to be adding the accurate player pretty soon, a playback system from the cloud. That's pretty cool. Um, more and more storage. Um, there's basically perks as you buy into a subscription online, but you're not, you're not required to do so. But, but the core of the cloud system is that it's a utility system, which basically means for every output minute, you're going to pay some fee. And we haven't overcomplicated it. So we have a base rate card that includes all of our image processing, all of our transcoding, and the loudness correction and the mixing features from the Skywalker sound. It's all included. You can't break it apart. You can't, you know, if you use Tachyon and Skywalker, it's the same price. If you use Tachyon and Dark Energy and Skywalker, same price. Okay, so it's one simple pricing so that we're not trying to lose our heads about how to tag all the different proteins. It's, it really gets overly complicated. So we wanted to start with something simple. If you do something like the retiming, then we're gonna, there's gonna be an upcharge there because it's a much more complex technology. There's even more technology involved with it. So with, we're trying to protect the end user from all of that, you know, and just provide a very simple formula, which is if it's $2 a finish minute, it's $2 a finish minute. You just figure out how much content you need to run through it. So once again, on-prem is subscription. In the cloud is subscription plus utility. Hopefully that clears that up. I mean, these, it's not early days on this, but it kind of is. I mean, I, I feel like our industry is really taking on the concept of OPEX uh, a lot more seriously now than it was a couple of years ago. I remember NAB three or four years ago, everything was cloud, everything was cloud. And then, and then we went in and we created this cloud solution and it was like, okay, where is everybody? Well, we're still looking into this. We're still considering it. And especially given now that a lot of folks are having to be able to work remotely, I think the time is great in order to release some really solid, like I said, virtual brick and mortar to the, to the, uh, the market. Fantastic. And Steve, before I let you guys go, just tell us how this product, these tools helps your, your work, how, how it can help other audio post pros do their job. Sure. Um, I mean, just the loudness correction piece alone has become a very complex process these days. Um, and it's very hard to create a piece of audio content meet all the different loudness standards and make sure it sounds good. Um, and so I think that's one area that we really wanted to, to address. How can we, you know, help um, the creative folks get their content to the and people users and hear it as best they can across all the different standards that we're required to meet. Fantastic. Thanks for taking the time, guys. I really appreciate it. Lance, Steve, mm -hmm. be well, stay safe.